how to issue tokens with the right legal structure. Hi, I'm Katie from Legal Nodes, and this is the first video in a five-part series on the legal basics of token issuance. A quick reminder, this information is not legal advice. Now, if you're planning to issue tokens in your company, you might be wondering what is the best way to do it and how can I do it so that it's gonna be legally sound and won't create problems in the future? Well, right now, there's no single regulatory approach on how to issue tokens, and the regulations that are out there are changing all the time. So there are four critical questions that you need to have the answers to, and we'll be covering each of these in the next four videos in this series. First up, we'll look at how you should consider minting your token. So is it going to be a centralized or decentralized strategy? Then we'll look at what a token SPV is and why it's needed for token issuance structuring. Next, we'll look at VASP regimes and how these can affect the selection process when choosing jurisdictions for token issuance. We'll also cover which crypto-friendly countries have VASP regimes. Lastly, we'll look at everything else that you might want to think about when you are using tokens or issuing tokens for fundraising purposes. Now, before we dive into the rest of the series, there's a few more things to think about. All prospective token issuing companies fall into one of the following categories. They are either traditional venture backed uh, startups like SaaS, marketplaces, social networks, messengers, etc., or they are blockchain or crypto businesses. So for traditional startups that are issuing tokens, they will have to be mindful of introducing a token issuing company into their existing corporate structure, which often already has investors and allocated option pools. Now, this is critical for correctly organizing token distribution amongst existing investors and prospective token holders. For businesses that fall into that second category, so the blockchain and crypto businesses like crypto exchanges, wallets, NFTs, Plata and Games, Web3 funds, etc. Now, these companies often plan to issue tokens early on in their operation. And because of these plans, these businesses, these businesses will need to choose a jurisdiction that will enable them to attract both equity and token based funding. So we'll look at what kinds of jurisdictions might be suitable in part four and five of this series. Keeping all of that in mind, I'll see you in the next video. You can find more video series on our socials. Just search for Legal Nodes and give us a follow to stay updated with the latest Web3 Legal Insights. Thanks and see you next time.